We're going to recap. Just very quickly, I'm going to take three, three people to give feedback from what you learned yesterday. What stood out for you, okay? And what do you want to hear? Uh, what what do you do you want to hear from us today? So a quick um, a quick recap. Yesterday, um, and we discussed a number of things. So I would like to get uh, just very quick recap um, what you learned and your expectation for today. So I will begin with the ladies. Uh, I'll begin with Sister Lelero. From your experience yesterday, uh, what, what, what were your takeaways and um, how does it lead to what we are going to learn today? What I learned yesterday and I was able to go with we are major in two. One was how to create content and as we are talking, I kept creating my own using the costume uh, and teaching of my institution and then uh, the other thing was how to work with the uh, animators. What we need to do is that we have to use very simple words when we are communicating to the animators such that they know what exactly we need to be put in our content. Those were the major things I went to do. Right. Thank you very much, Sister Lelero from Nkumba University for those very beautiful takeaways, yes. And then we go to, we go to Mbarara, Dr. Kamoga. What were your takeaways from yesterday? Thank you very much. Uh, good morning, all colleagues. From yesterday, I also learned about how to make, to make content for animation. And uh, also that we need to create content that is uh, that can uh, a student can uh, pick a message within less than a minute at most, within by that, within that than one minute. So to compress your content, to make sure that uh, you are putting out the message within one minute. That was a, a new thing that I learned that I need to do also that the animators are not technical people. We need to simplify our material, whatever we have to give to them. We do the, if we need to put in pictures, whatever we want, we need to, to assume they cannot find them on their own. Uh, on their own. We try to save their time so that they can, they can save our time. Uh, we don't have to have a lot of consultation back and forth when they are developing uh, the subject. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Dr. Kamoga, for that feedback. Then uh, there was a, a group that was multidisciplinary. They were moving across the two teams, much as they were assigned the two teams, but also they had an eye. They were supposed to have an eye on a very important component of content development called inclusion. So I, I want to hear from um, Emmy. Thank you, guys and members. What I noted yesterday, is that uh, to develop these animations, of course, we must first understand the curriculum. Once we have gotten the curriculum, we have to understand the course outline for that specific course you are developing the animations for. And when we are developing the animations, every projection, or let me say every slide you are projecting, should take at least maximum of one minute. And in this one minute, the detailed information to be learned must feature in that animation presented. And uh, to make uh, our animations more inclusive, it should really be understandable by every other learner. It should be outstanding, whereby if the learners have seen, they should really see and understand it with ease. And uh, the animators have expectations from us. They expect us to give them content that are not so much complicated. Content that they can just uh, understand when they look through. Of course, through our guidance, when there's any need, we need to elaborate clearly to them, explain clearly to them. 
And in our content, we should give illustrative examples for the animators. And we should also give explanatory notes for each of these illustrative examples we are giving them so that the animations can come here. Thank you.